welcome to my kitchen and today we're going to do a video response to Shelby over at the Queen's Cabinet who is having a contest entitled, you know, Pinching Pennies Contest where she's asked us to share how we pinch pennies in our own lives and maybe we can help other people do the same based on the way we do things. Well, we constantly are saving money because I'm constantly saying that Rick and I are total scrounges. Now, mind you, I didn't grow up like that. Um, of course, when I was growing up, the economy wasn't that bad. Um, I lived in an upper middle class home. My, my mother didn't actually work outside the home until I turned 16. I always joke about that. I did not know how to use a washing machine until I was almost 17 years old. And I was never allowed in the kitchen. Um, to cook dinner. My mom always cooked the dinner and even the other night she said I never let you guys cook dinner I always did it myself. I watched my mom a lot and I helped her with different things, but um, It wasn't it wasn't something that I did on a regular basis and when I was allowed to cook it was always a treat but in any case um, Living today is is a lot more difficult. Um, my mom and dad, if they wanted something when I was growing up, always remember they saved their money if it was an expensive item, um, and they they went out and they got what they wanted. Um, my parents have always been very thrifty. They've always been um, uh, savers, and my parents. I always joke. My parents have like, you know pristine credit. I, I always joke because you know they're always getting offers in the mail like for the platinum or the titanium credit card or whatever and I always joke I said you know what's next the deity level credit card because I think that's what they have like they have the most perfect credit I've ever seen anyone have but in any case that's neither here nor there so I'm just giving you kind of a, a background um, I've always been a scrounge I remember the very first time I ever moved out of the house and I lived with a roommate and and I never ever we never went to thrift stores growing up ever and the very first apartment that I ever had with a roommate and we needed furniture and we went to a secondhand furniture store and that's probably the very first time I ever thought about buying something used we always had yard sales we didn't go to them um, so I would say that I got that bug when I was back in college I think a lot of people do but you know buying things secondhand is one of the biggest ways we save money for instance, you all know that about a year ago, we got a new washer and dryer. Well, we went to the store and we, we, we priced out the washer and dryer that we wanted and we found the model that we wanted. And, and I'm such a stickler. I've got Rick standing right here. He wants to say something. Are you going to tell him why we had to buy new furniture? Oh, I'll tell him that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but... I thought, well, I'm not going to pay a thousand dollars for the washer and dryer set that I wanted until I look. We have a couple of resources in my area, and everyone has these resources. You just have to look for them. Craigslist, um, and then our newspaper twice a week runs something called Cool Cheap Stuff, where you can look in that one ads, and people can actually put free ads in the paper as long as the item doesn't cost more than a certain amount of money and you can list it you don't have to pay for the ad and then somebody who's interested in that will call and you can get rid of it for little to no money and uh, that's how we got our new 55 gallon aquarium and stand and that's a four hundred dollar setup we got it complete with everything the aquarium the the hood the filters the stand all we had to put a little bit of work into it we had to clean it up we had to give the metal stand a new coat of paint and rick actually made it so that I would have extra storage underneath and you know it worked out for us what would have cost four hundred dollars new cost forty dollars out of pocket because somebody didn't have room for it anymore and we did um, so getting stuff used is the best way the washer and dryer I go back to that um, what would have cost us a thousand dollars we met some people who had listed it on a, um, a website here in my area because we have a military base called Cherry Point. Um, they listed it on the Cherry Point Yard Sales website that they had this washer and dryer. It was less than six months old. It was the exact same model that we were looking at and they wanted $500 for it. Um, they had been transferred to Hawaii. 
So, and then you all know that out of that deal, the very best part of it that was we got to bring Tally home with us for a little while. And she came with the washer and the dryer. So, look in your newspaper. Look and see if you have a local uh, area kind of auction site or yard sale site. Because on this Cherry Point yard sale site, people can post ads for free. You can have a paid subscription. You can put pictures on there. Or you can just have a place where people can email you and say, can you send me pictures? And it doesn't cost you anything to list them. Uh, another great website because I am a huge scrounge. I love getting stuff for free, like the wood chips. All you have to do is ask. All they can say is no. Okay, free. Uh, there's a website called Free Cycle, and there's usually available all over the country. You put in your web, your zip code, and then you can sign up like for um, a Google Groups, and you'll get regular emails when people have something they want to get rid of. You know, I see people on there all the time. Um, I have size. 6x to 8 clothes for little girls and we have just tons of them come and get them um, or send me an email and we'll set up a pickup time people get rid of stuff all the time we have gotten a free lawn mower off of that website it needed a little work but it was the exact same model as the as the lawn mower lawn tractor that we had and that needed a little work so we we picked it up and we brought it home for parts um, I've gotten a big box of craft supplies that somebody wanted to get rid of. I may not use everything in there right away, but there was some good stuff in there, and I got it for free. So check out Free Cycle in your area. I, like I said, what? And then Rick's yelling at me from the living room. Let your friends know. I always let my friends know. People I've worked with in the past who I've become friends with, we're big scrounges. Um, we love to take things off your hands. If you have something that you want to get rid of that you don't necessarily want to sell, maybe you hate having a yard sale, call Noreen and Rick because we might use it, or if we don't think we can use it, we might not need it right now. We might think, wow, well, maybe we can do something with that, okay? Um, I got a big 52-inch big screen TV from one of the ladies I used to work with who said, I have this, it's in my extra room. My husband opened up the back of it and um, to vacuum it out and it didn't work anymore. So we wondered if, um, we know that Rick likes to tinker with things, would you like it? So yeah, we'd love it. it would, that's the TV we have in our living room. So, you know, I have a $2,500 TV in my living room that I got for free. Uh, we did have to have it repaired one time and that cost $300. So basically I got a $2,500 TV for $300 but I got it for free. The same lady a couple years later calls me and says, hey, I got a new TV and I wanted to get rid of this other TV. It's a 42 inch flat screen. Do you think you want it? It turns itself off and on all the time. Yeah, I'd love to have that. So I went over to her house and we picked it up. And we took it to our TV repairman who charged us $150 to fix it. So again, I got about a thousand dollar television with stereo surround sound, uh, LCD TV. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has the most beautiful picture of any television I've ever seen um, and uh, I got it for free and, it, and for what it cost us to have it repaired so is little things like that big ticket items should always you know you should always use prudence when purchasing them it's wonderful to see them on the display in, in the store um, I hate spending money on furniture and my husband will tell you that we actually went to a furniture store once when we first moved to North Carolina because um, we brought no furniture with us except our beds when we moved and we went to the furniture store and about I came out of the furniture store and I cried we were in such a really bad financial way at that time and I had no living room furniture and Christmas was coming and um, and and I was in tears because went to the the furniture store and the sofa is a thousand dollars and the sofa is made like crap okay because it's it's not even it's not even good furniture anymore. In North Carolina and South Carolina, they used to be like the furniture production capitals of the United States. They hardly make anything here anymore. It's all from overseas because it's cheap crap. And a thousand dollars. What? It says that the first ones we bought were used at the furniture store. Right. Brought those home. Mm-hmm. Something happened to them. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> he wants he wants me to get to the point. He's on other ones on Cherry Point Airport. That's true. We've we've had. Um, after the going to the furniture store and crying my eyes out incident, we actually drove um, about 90 minutes to another town, and we went to this huge used furniture store, and, um, so used and it was used and new furniture, and we found two sofas 
and something else. We bought something else. Love it was two love seats. And we got them for less than $100, and we brought them home. And, you know, we also love to go... Oh, well... I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll go back, because Rick really yeah. wants to tell me this story. We got the, yard, the recliner at yard sale, too. We've got, yeah, and then we, we found a recliner at a yard sale, and then, um, you know, it's all in how you look at it. My mother would never buy furniture at a yard sale. I have no problem with it. You have to look at its potential. Even if you have to put a slip cover on it and make everything match, it doesn't have to be perfect. There is one thing I can't, I can't fix furniture, though, when it has been eaten by your dog. Um, when we had Sissy at the very beginning, she was maybe less than a year old, we came home and Sissy had literally eaten a sofa and a, and, and, and a recliner. And the love, love seat. I never wanted to beat an animal so bad in my life. I did. <laughs> never. Oh my gosh. Sissy escaped with this, by the skin of her teeth and I love her to death now, but I gotta tell you, I've never had a dog eat, eat a sofa. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not, I'm gonna voice this over, so. Anyway, um, used furniture, big ticket items, check your free cycle, your local yard sale website, go to yard sales, look at your newspaper. That's how we save money on big ticket items. Put the word out, let your friends know you'll take their stuff off their hands if they don't want it anymore. Other ways that we just save on a daily basis, we shop at the commissary. Um, Rick is retired from the Air Force. He served for 20 years. He was a tech sergeant when he retired. And, um, and you know, you, a lot of you know that he is on a uh, military pension and a disability because he has the multiple sclerosis. But um, we have to go. We drop Molly off every morning at school, and we're just a block away from the commissary on base. So we go there once a week. We buy our meat, and we shop really good sales there. Um, commissaries do have sales and about once a month they change out their um, their sale items so keep your eyes open there if you shop on a military base you'll know what I'm talking about you shop sales in the local grocery stores which put their ads out once a week you buy in bulk when those things go on sale for instance I'm always talking about Harris Teeter when the pasta goes on sale buy two get three free they usually only let you buy ten at a time so you go every day you take your husband with you you each make separate purchases and you buy twenty boxes at a time and you fill up your pasta bin that you have sitting in your bedroom don't lie to me I know that those of you who don't have a good pantry I don't have a room to keep my food storage in so we have to get creative okay um, Again, anytime they have buy two, get three free on something, I know that I'm going to use. If it's a dry good or a grocery item that has a long-term shelf life, I am there. I'm buying and buying and buying until I can, you know, fit no more. I happened upon a great sale at CVS once where the albacore tuna, um, the bumblebee albacore tuna that I love was 99 cents a can. Honey, I bought 40 cans. So, you know, my, the way my kids go through tuna... That was a great buy. Um, I pack my kids' lunches every single day. I do not send them to school with money to buy the lunch that the school serves, which is absolutely disgusting and completely unnutritious and void of flavor. And my kids will tell you that. My kids actually end up having to take extra stuff to share with the kids who don't bring their lunch because they won't eat the school lunch. And I don't mind that one bit. I really don't. So, yeah, I am probably spending a little more money to send them to school with good lunches, but I'm saving money overall. We eat home an awful lot. We don't eat out a whole lot. We make our own pizza. How hard is it to make a pizza? Okay, we do game night at home. We don't we don't go out and spend a lot of money on entertainment. We garden. We grow and preserve our own food. And going back to the entertainment portion, I know that Brenda talked about going to Disneyland and not worrying about how much money she was spending and then Shelby, you shared that beautiful trip to Hawaii and you know what? We all have to have our outlets and many of you have heard me talk about Bush Gardens like I love Bush Gardens, it's my favorite place on the face of the earth and I save money, and this may be out there a little, I save money by having season passes to Bush Gardens because if you go to Bush Gardens and you walk up to the gate and you buy tickets for your family, they're going to be $65 per person. But I pay $24 a month to have season passes for my family. And that's for six people because I buy passes for my, my parents. And they may only go once every two years. But do you know what? It's a lot cheaper to do that. And when I go there, I can just walk through the gate. And if you know how to play it right... 
you don't spend a lot of money when you're in there. You just have a really good time. You go to the shows, you have a couple of snacks, and then you go out for dinner outside the park because as good as the food is there, and I'm here to tell you the food at Bush Gardens is awesome, it's a, it's a lot cheaper and economical to eat outside the gates of the park. But, you know, that may be one of my big kind of whims and maybe it may be a little frivolous and it may be a little indulgent but I don't care life is too damn short and the times that I have with my family when I'm there you can't put a price on that so that's my response a very long one I'm, you know I can ramble on forever to Shelby for her um, how to pinch pennies how do we pinch pennies contest and um, I'm really crossing my fingers because when you put up the prizes and I saw a gift, a gift certificate to William Sonoma, I almost peed my pants because William Sonoma is like, um, you. my husband has never ever seen a, a William Sonoma store and I've never been to a William Sonoma. I get the catalog and um, all he would do was say, control yourself. <laughs> Because you have no idea, well maybe Shelby, maybe you do have some idea of the kind of damage that can be done in that store. So anyway, sweetie, thank you so much for having the contest. That's my video response. I hope you all liked it, as long as it was. Until next time, I'll see ya.